He's just a good old boy who loves burning rubber and driving fast. You're tuned into the Clay Milliken YouTube channel where you never know what you're gonna see. So while the team is here servicing the car, I wanted to do something that I like to do every so often, and that is answer questions that you guys have sent in, which I appreciate those. And as always, I tell you that uh, I read the comments and I do, so, but I'm gonna do this a little different. I've got questions pulled up on my phone and we're gonna go and let the team answer some of these questions. Let's go, let's do this. All right, so we're going to answer a question by Bill Madison. He said, I've always wanted to know what kind of gasoline do you spray in the engine at startup? It's just pump gas. Plain and simple. That's all it is. <laughs> El cheapo gasoline. Yeah, that's it. All right, that was a quick, easy one right there. I know, there. I know. I picked, I picked an easy one. I'm not going to lie. All right. <laughs> so a lot of y'all always ask, what am I doing in there? Stomping on the loud pedal. They have set up everything to make this bearing go fast or slow according to track conditions. And in Phoenix, we didn't have it figured out. <laughs> Plain and simple. But that is the magic, all of this, all those timers and all these people of making the clutch work. Right now we're simulating, uh, it's called a logger test, it's a cannon test. We put pressure to the cannon, we crank it. This is the cannon, right? Yep. So we're simulating basically a run and where you can set uh, the flows. We can set these flows to a certain rate uh, and when to go off and when to turn it on, turn it off basically. So now, what, what starts the whole system? The, the throttle pedal. Stopping the loud pedal. Yep. <laughs> so now what we'll do is we'll set that to 300 and we can crank it to 400, 500, whatever the pressure. Is, and now we can simulate uh, when that number one flows goes off, turn it on, number two, three, four, five, six, all, all up to eight flows. Then what we'll do is we'll turn that to one second. That'll turn green. It takes a second. Yeah, there's no SD card, but then we'll simulate a run, download it, and we can see the pressure basically simulating a run just on the clutch without even making a run. So if we stand on the throttle, we can actually see the bearing moving yep. away from the clutch? So now, I'll hit the pedal. Now that's simulating the run, you put pressure towards it because you got to think of the clutch. You got the primaries and the lock of levers applying load, and that's what we're doing here with big spring. Now we crank the 300. Basically, it just simulates the run. So, Kaylin, the, all the levers are against this right here. That right? is correct. Yeah. So, if we back this off, you can see it a little clearer. Um, we actually have a clutch mocked up in the car right now. Um, this throw out bearing, let's scoot that in. This is where all the levers ride on. And this cannon will actually bolt right here to the bell housing. You can see we already have a throw out bearing in here currently. So when this is bolted to the bell housing, we'll go ahead and we'll charge the system. So that bearing will start all the way out and throughout the run, as Jesse explained, as those flows open and allow the bearing to move back, the clutch levers are gonna determine how quickly that fluid's gonna pass through those flows along with how open or closed those flows are. We can also we can also adjust throughout the run using the low or the high map. So if we don't see enough clutch pressure, it could actually pause this bearing. Or if we see too much clutch pressure, the high map will actually bump the bearing back to allow the clutch to either settle or catch up with itself. Wasn't one of your questions, but it's been asked before. All right. So Rob T asked, is there a way to fix those torch heads or are they scrap? Well, they're not, they're actually not scrap at all. This wouldn't be a bad repair to make. We work closely with uh, PME and they're good friends with us at Rick Ware Racing. And they can actually go in and weld all this up, deck it flat, put the firing back in it, and it'll look basically like a brand new, perfectly surfaced head. And uh, this wouldn't be a bad repair to make at all. Probably need a new seat here and 
and all that, but both these two sides. Won't be hard at all to fix right up. So we talked about it in the video. You said you just pack it away because it could go back to the shop and oh yeah, head, yeah, I'm head right down, right down the street to Dennis. Yep, yep. You might think, oh, it's a ton of work. Well, it might be a lot, a decent amount of work for the guys at the machine shop. But as for the cylinder head guy at the race, I'm just gonna put this right back in the cabinet. I'm gonna get a, another head out, throw some valves in it, fuel system, and we'll have another one just just like it to replace it. So not bad at all. While it may look ugly, it will run again. Yes, it will. <laughs> All right, Mr. Bob Smith, you said too much background noise in the trailer, too dark, plus with all the mirrors. Bruce Lee movie? I don't know that that's a question, but I've got answers. So there's a brand new light bulb that me and Mr. Bruce Reed just put in. So it was dark because this light's been burned out. It's noisy because there's a generator that powers this trailer. As for all the mirrors, me and Jimbo just love looking at each other. Wow. <laughs> no matter what angle we're setting. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the answer to your question. I don't know that it was a question, but uh, we can't help the background noise. We had a bulb out, that's why it's dark. But uh, we're trying to give you what's happening in the lounge, whether it's dark and mirrored or not. And I love Bruce Lee movies, by the way. All right, I'm in the lounge and I'm totally going to interrupt two crew chiefs working their tail off to answer Mr. Mark Geary. I've been a fan for years, but can someone tell me what the tuners do standing next to the engine on the starting line adjusting something? Cheers from the UK. So I've got Jimbo and Bruce Reed here. I don't know what y'all are doing because I'm just strapped in the car and thinking about stopping on the lot though. So what are y'all doing? <laughs> Well, there's a, there's a couple things we do. So um, usually as Clay's rolling back forward and, and we have uh, Kaylin out front and she's rolling him up, um, what we're doing is we're messing with the idle a little bit. So we're trying to make sure the idle is where we want it at that point. And once we have the idle where we want it, then we usually look over to the uh, our competitor that we're running in the other lane and when they're ready, the last thing we'll do on the barrel valve, there's a fuel enrichment screw, we call it. Uh, we will open that up and that will give the engine uh, more fuel uh, before Clay stomps on that loud, loud pedal and hopefully makes a really good run. There's your answer. All right, so Ron asked, why do we crank the motor down manually after each run? Well, uh, we do that because we gotta make sure that there is no fuel in any of the cylinders. So we'll take this turnover bar, put it right here on the uh, crank and uh, turn it over. And then uh, after that, we'll go ahead and we'll attach the starter here, run the starter on. And yeah, that makes sure that, you know, when we run it, run it with the starter that if there is fuel in the cylinders, it's not gonna be a good day for any of us. <laughs> it's so been seen before, you know, it's uh, actually with him, it happened with them and they're, it's not pretty. You yeah. can look it up on YouTube. Yeah, on this channel. Yeah. Yes. So you're actually cranking the motor backwards so in case there is fuel, yep. you're putting it into the headers. Yep. And that is a, a safety thing. Yes, yes, every team does it. And if you don't, it's it's been seen before on this channel, what will happen. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Boom. All right, Bruce, it's your turn here. Peter Swales asked, do you ever adjust the rear wing to stop the tires from smoking at half to three quarter track? And I'm assuming, he, well, he may not be from Australia, but he spelled tires T-Y-R-E-S. Is that an English like yes, UK thing? Yes, that is. Yes, that is English. Yes, we would spell it T Y R E S. <laughs> proper English. Pro proper, proper, English. proper, good, bestest English. <laughs> uh, yeah, we would. Um, if the track was loose in the middle, or if the density air was really low, like if the air was thin. Like in Denver, for us. Well, no, I think in Denver you put your wing up, don't you, Jim? Yeah. 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 No, if, like if it was not so humid, so the air was thinner out of the moisture, but mainly if the track was a little untidy in the middle. Kind of like here? Kind of like here. <laughs> yeah. Untidy. Kind of like here, yeah. So we would, uh, we would put it up maybe 0.2 or 0.5 of a degree. So is there a rule on maximum up? 
I think it's, it used to be three degrees, but we wouldn't go anywhere near that these days. What would it do if you did? Oh. Just crush the tires and? Probably, I mean, you've got to be going fast. So, you know, at, for us down home, we're, you know, we're probably only doing 318, 320, it's not so critical, but here, 330, 335, 337, yeah, you're probably not going to be cranking too much in it. <laughs> so, to follow that question up with my own, there's also a minimum, correct? Yeah, I think it's zero. Zero. Zero, yeah. So Over no, there. Oh, no, zero. we don't have a minimum. Yeah, yeah, we don't. We, we don't, we're, we're pretty loose on our rules down home. We can, yeah, there's a, a very, very basic set of rules. Yeah, awesome. I think here last year they implemented a rule where you can, um, the maximum you can have was one degree. And then I think you can go minus one, I think. Yeah. So Jimbo, you're saying that like we, we don't move our wing a lot then? Nope, nope, but you know, it seems to, seems to work pretty good. Yeah. So I don't, I don't move my wing. I've worked with other crew chiefs years ago where the wing was like a teeter-totter. I see a lot of crew chiefs here. You know, in the staging lanes, you'll see crew chiefs having the team move the wing a lot. Yeah. And for years, I've done it. I've never had a crew chief that moves it a lot either. Yeah, we, we moved ours up Sunday, you know, like a half a degree. Yeah. And uh, just to uh, try to you know, help ourselves a little bit out in the middle track. Cause really like where we ended up, you know, the end of the year, you know, tracks were really good. So it was almost like this weekend, it was, we had to kind of go back to the late spring, summertime, you know, wing setting. So it's a rough combination of really cool air and a kind of a marginal track with, with heat on it. Yeah. So it was tough. So I, I just posted a video said the track beat us up. That was my title on it. Why would a track, when we leave Gainesville, let's say, and we come here, and the NHRA has the same people prepping it, why would we see where so many cars did not make it down the racetrack? I got two, two good guys to ask that question. Um, I mean, my opinion is like, we spent the whole month of uh, February testing at Gainesville, like various teams, and there's track prep and and all that, and um, you know, so by the time we got to Gainesville, you know, I think the track was was pretty stout at, at that at that point. Now the starting line was suspect there because uh, it, it just didn't want to hold rubber. So you know, a few teams we had some issues, you know, with with that, but. Boy, once you got past 60 foot, you know, it was, it was pretty solid. And coming here, you know, we used to do preseason testing here. Well, we didn't this year. And I don't know really what kind of activity was done on the racetrack prior to us getting here. So, you know, it, it appears like the track had like a lot of older rubber on it. Like it wasn't scraped very well, if it was scraped at all. and. You know, plus you're out in this dry air, and you've got like uh, when they spray the track, it's like it's like when we're out here in this dry air, it's like our skin dries up real quick. We put lotion on it and it sucks it in real quick, and um, and the track was kind of the same way. It's like they put the glue on it, it was like it, it sucked the glue in real quick, and um, just made for tricky race conditions. You know, Friday night, like our car, it was it was trying real hard to run really good but the, the track out past 300 feet just wasn't there for us you know we just threw uh, just threw too much at it at that point and it didn't like it and and if you hit it right you can run halfway decent obviously you know 367 was out there 68 69 but 85 degree track we've seen a lot better numbers than that and then the funny cars you know they were they were struggling pretty hard right. Friday night as well. So what will be the difference of leaving here where you just said there's not been a lot of activity on the track and we're going to Pomona where there's zero activity except when we're there? Yeah, that's true. And um, the, I'm, I'm trying to think what the commenters are going to yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. So you know, Pomona, like 
we ran there, you know, and it's and it's kind of weird. Um, we'd finish the year up there in November, and then we get we'd usually go back there in February and race, and, and it was like it was because they don't do much out there, obviously, and the track seemed pretty good, and uh, you know what always saved us there was the, the cool temperatures and then the fact that the sun wasn't so intense on the track. Now Pomona looking at the weather it looks like it could be cloudy which will help but if the sun comes out it's going to be intense on the racetrack yeah. even though it's only going to be 65 degrees outside air temperature so I would hope that um, NHRA does a, a better job of pre-race track prep and maybe it's not all them maybe it was the track itself um, especially being that it's their track. Um, also, there's supposed to be runs on Thursday, but looking at the weather, there might not be because it could be raining yeah. on Thursday. So that always helps out as well, too. Now, the track surface itself at Pomona, is it not shot peened? Like it had a, a process done at one point to help hold rubber? I think so. I They ground it because it was pretty bumpy. And they ground it and they fixed a lot of the bumps. And um, and it seems like it's it, it's it's a pretty decent surface right now. Yeah. Um, where Phoenix, like this racetrack, like it, it's pretty rough. You know. It it's needs, old. It's old. It's rough. It yeah. needs, maybe that's why they're closing it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, there are so many questions on my phone. There is no way we could get to them. But I always have fun doing this every once in a while. And. It was kind of fun doing it with people that know way more about it than me. So anyway, see you guys in the next one.